What's up beautiful people, it's your boy GDO and I'm back again with a new video. In this one we're going to be checking out Michael Knowles rejects students' baseless claims about brains of transgendered people. Without wasting your time, let's get to it. From the European Society of Endocrinology that has found the brains of transgender people both operate and look more like their desired gender rather than the one that they were assigned at birth. The article states, the pattern of brain activation in both transgender and adolescent boys and girls most closely represented that of non-transgender boys and girls of their desired gender. In addition, GD or uh, gender dysphoria, adolescent girls showed a more male typical brain activation during a visual spatial memory exercise. Finally, some brain structure changes were detected that were also more similar, not identical, to those typical of the desired gender of GD boys and girls. Dr. Ba Bacher, the um, doctor conducting the uh, research, says, although more research is needed, we now have evidence that sexual differentiation of the brain differs, differs in young people with GD as they show functional brain characteristic, characteristics that are typical of their desired gender. Mm. So then Mr. Knowles, as established in the 14th Amendment, everybody is entitled to the legal protections as put forth in the Equal Protections and Due Processes Clauses. So the, interpre the interpretation of these clauses can be found in Griswold v. Connecticut, Loving v. Virginia, and Obergefell v. Hodges, the landmark cases enshrining the rights to birth control, interracial marriage, and same-sex marriage. So this is if a the question? 14th Amendment it's stands correct, long. these legal bans on transgender care and their existence in general are therefore viciously in violation of the 14th Amendment. These laws are also not neutral nor generally applicable as required to have a law be constitutional. The precedent can be found in the rulings of the Employment Division, Department of Human Resources of Oregon v. Smith. You know, I fear that I was going to be the only one to give a speech tonight, but I'm glad that right. I get to attend a speech as well. Yeah, it's actually very long. I apologize for the longevity. Um, but so then, Mr. Knowles, the due to your call for the good of society, transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. Entirely, what do you propose we do? We cannot violate the U.S. Constitution, and as seeing as these laws and bills are targeting and are only applicable to approximately 1.2 to 1.8 percent of people aged 13 to 17, and approximately 0.4 to 0.6 percent of the ages 18 and above, it is obviously and very clearly not neutral nor generally applicable. So I ask you again, what do you propose we do to address this issue that is not in violation of the Constitution and is humane? Hmm. So there was a lot there, so let's, yeah. let's take it from the top. You, you premised your question on the, the suggestion that brains. men who identify as mm -hmm. women, uh, they actually have the brains of women, right? And, men, and women who identify as men, they actually have the brains of men. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would ask you, could you tell me a little bit more about the differences in the brains of men and women? Exactly. How do men and women differ by their brains? That's exactly the point I was thinking about when I heard that. Would you that. say one is a little smarter than the other, you know, one's a little sharper, those women maybe they're a little more emotional, men they're a little, they're a little better at, uh, you know, keeping a level head. What, what would you say is the difference between the male and the female brain? So some of the research that they've shown is different sizes of different um, portions of the brain. Um, I'm not, I don't have the actual Professionalism. Like, facts in front of my face. I simply only yeah. have like the actual findings yeah. of the research. I raise the question because I, I think you've unwittingly accepted a premise that is contrary to the uh, liberal point of view and probably to a polite conversation, which is that men and women have these fundamentally different brains. And so if you're saying that men and women are distinct categories and for that reason perhaps we ought to do away with some of the lies of the feminist movement and some of the lies of the uh, homosexual rights movement, that's fine by me. But I, I think that these claims are a little bit dubious. And, uh, and it also undermines the premise of transgenderism. The premise of transgenderism is that one's true self is not necessarily dependent upon one's body, so that one's sex is biologically determined, but one's gender expression is not biologically determined. Mm -hmm. It's socially constructed and can be whatever one wants it to be. But, but the case that you've just presented for it's transgenderism is different than that. What mm -hmm. you're saying is that actually transgenderism is biologically determined because the brain is an organ of the body. So what you're really claiming is that these men who claim to be women, they just are biologically women. So you're free to pursue more studies on this. The studies that I've seen are pretty scant, pretty weak, and are not 
particularly persuasive. But sure, you, you can have all of those studies. It still doesn't address the question of transgenderism, which is what happens when someone wants to identify as a sex that is different from their physical Biological. form. Yeah. And, and uh, in, that, in that issue, then we have to ask the question, can one really do that? And I see no evidence, including even if I believed all of those studies, which I don't, but even if I did, that still wouldn't make an argument for that point. So I think if you're going to argue for the transgender ideology, you have to make the point that identity has nothing to do with the physical body. And that's, that's absurd. And, and uh, there, are, there are plenty of ways to understand the relationship between our metaphysical selves and our physical selves. Uh, hylomorphism is the technical term that describes it for at least 2300 years it's good enough for me the idea that we're a union of body and soul that sexual difference derives from the body and is an inseparable accident of the individual that persists as long as the individual exists but it applies to the whole person because we're a composite of body and soul that's a, a reasonable explanation to me and it served us very well for the entirety of our civilization if the transgender movement has a different conception of what the person is they're free to make the argument but they haven't what they do is they vacillate between mutually contradictory arguments. On the one hand, they'll mutually say that my true self has nothing to do with my body. Then on the other hand, they'll make the argument you just made, which is that yeah. my true self is entirely dependent upon my body. And, and so I think they've got to get their story straight, but I don't think that they can. Yeah. I have a study. Okay, so that's it with the arguments, guys. Before I even start this one, I'm just going to say, what are your thoughts? Because I want to know what you guys have to say on this one. My personal opinion on this one would be coherence. It's like different people are trying to ascertain why something is right. And in the course of doing that, they take out objectiveness. You know, there are transgender people that would see some other things transgender people are saying and be like, what are you really talking about? You know? And this thing happens all across the board. It happens every time. It's like Christians seeing what other Christians are saying and they're like, is that really Christian? You know, some people say this is my identity, it's my social construct. It's when it's like biologically, I'm a woman. Um, so I should be allowed to um, be in a women's washroom. I should be allowed to act, do things, acknowledging myself as a woman. And then on the other hand, some people are saying I identify as a woman. I don't necessarily have the biological um, components to be a woman, but that this is my identity now. So I should be allowed to, you know, function as a woman. And this is causing a disruption where lots of people don't agree people can't even comprehend like if you tell some people about the concepts they're like i don't understand what you're talking about you know people can fathom the whole concept and that's the situation here and i commend the young lady she was coming from a place of a of a real argument she was coming from a place of um, research and i always like that you know when you're making a, a research or you're making a point or an argument you want to come from a from a factual standpoint you don't want to come into emotions and come and start screaming at people and hoping they accept you because you feel victimized i don't even want to hear that but she came with a whole paper she, she researched but i also believe the the paper is um it's almost baseless because if if you talk about the brain i've read some um, i've done some research in neuroscience i'm not a professional but i've read some papers there are comparisons like um there are traits that are identical in men and women to prove character i feel like coherence is a big factor why michael knows might have won this particular argument let me know your thoughts everything i said could be entirely wrong but feel free to correct me and feel free to tell me what you think that being said have a wonderful day peace